Welcome to Implementing Analytics webcast series. This on influencing decisions with non-financial data. This is brought to you by the JPK Group and Aurora Predictions. First, some introductions. JPK is best practice educational forums and discussions to help individuals and organizations conquer challenges with actionable and practical solutions, as well as open up new professional opportunities. Aurora is like Excel, big data, and artificial intelligence all in one to enable the CFO to solve their number one anxiety, making their quarterly revenue targets and impacting revenue growth. And now to our webcast. First, what is the goal of finance? It is to advance from the trusted scorekeeper to the strategic partner, to have a seat at the table, and to do this, requires analytics that provide insight to influence decision making. Today we're going to talk about using non-financial data in decision making. For example, as a trusted scorekeeper, finance provides variance analysis to identify areas of stress and risk. For example, sales are down year to date. As a partner to the business, Finance uses analytics on non-financial data to provide insight to identify where and why there is risk. Now, let's use some non-financial data, in this case, on sales trends. And non-financial data would be like salesman tenure, customer satisfaction, and leading economic indicators. For example, here, we see new deal sales are declining. This is financial data. We can also see that the volume of new deals are declining. This is CRM data. And now we'll bring in HR data, in this case, the tenure of salesmen. And what we can see here in this line is how well salesmen tenure on the y-axis is correlated with the number of deals. And what this means is that the number of deals is highly correlated with salesman tenure. And that makes sense in this case since the products that are being sold are more technical in nature and the salesmen with the higher tenure are better able to sell their product. So this advises us to affect the commission plan to better retain salesmen. In this case, let's look at, again, financial data, which is revenue. In this case, revenue is starting to decline. Now, we can also use financial data to see revenue growth by customer. And in some cases, customer growth is up. And in some cases, customer growth is down. And again, we can affect a correlation to look at revenue growth on the x-axis and customer growth satisfaction on the y-axis. Once again, we're seeing a high correlation. So this is advising us that customer satisfaction and revenue growth are highly correlated. And something that you can't see very well on this graph is that there's also a threshold. In other words, on a scale of 1 to 10, um, when customer satisfaction is over 8, uh, customers grow. And then when there would in a range of 7 to 8, they kind of stay flat. And below 7, it's like a cliff. And customer growth declines and customers churn. So customer satisfaction typically is external data performed by a third party. OK, now let's get a bit more sophisticated. In this case, we're going to look at a manufacturer of business and consumer electronics that has a, ver a number of strategic business units. In this case, we're going to be looking at the business solutions unit. And what we want to do is correlate uh, civilian unemployment with gross distributor sales of the business solutions business unit. And we're going to correlate civilian unemployment as a four-month leading indicator. And we can see by this readout over here that it is well correlated, in this case, two bars strong, 
or for those of you who know the coefficient of correlation, it's uh, 0.835. Now, it shows uh, red or uh, negative because unemployment is inversely correlated with sales. In other words, as unemployment goes down, sales go up. The green bars in this case to the left of the dotted line are the historical gross distributor sales. And to the right of the dotted line is the four month forecast. Now what we can see is that these green bars fit fairly well around this red line up to the point of um, this dotted line. And the red line is a statistically generated forecast using unemployment as a four-month leading indicator. The yellow bars, or the yellow lines I should say, around the red line happen to be two standard deviations. And what those two yellow lines mean is that anything that falls within the two yellow lines would be a reasonable forecast. And anything that falls outside the two yellow lines would be unreasonable. And this is proved if we look at the past. We can see that not only do the green bars fall closely around the red line, but they also fall within the two yellow lines. So what we notice are a couple of things in our forecast. First, if we did not have these yellow lines and we looked at the forecasts for September, October, November, December and compare them to the same time, September, October, November, December last year, we, we might be led to think that, these, that this forecast is fairly aggressive since it's a fairly uh, large increase over the prior year. However, when we put the two yellow lines in place, we see that the forward forecast, the forward four months, are not only skewed toward the bottom range of the yellow lines, but one month in November is actually outside the range. So certainly for that month of November, we would say the forecast is unreasonable. Now here's the perfect blend of humans and machines. So a machine, in this case using statistics and leading indicators of unemployment with gross distributor sales, is telling us that the forecast seems relatively low and at least in one month is too low. Now what would happen is we could ask the manager of the business solutions unit to explain why the uh, forecast is the way it is. After all, this forecast came from the CRM system. And the business solution manager can come in and he can say, look, the reason why the forecast is the way it is is because our biggest distributor and, our, and his biggest store are going to uh, be closed for the next four months because his biggest store has um, had a water main break that's effectively closed off all the streets surrounding the store. And until that's repaired, uh, what we have done is extracted those sales from the forecast. Now that is a very reasonable answer and one that is using information about the future that wasn't contained in the past data. So without that specific knowledge, we would be led to believe that this forecast that is given us from the CRM system would be unreasonable or with that knowledge in this case, we find that it is reasonable. So here is a perfect way to not only take forecasts, but test forecasts for their reasonability using non-financial data, in this case, civilian unemployment. One more thing before we leave, I'd like to invite you to an Implementing Analytics Academy. It's unique, it's university style with lectures and workshops. It guides you through implementing an analytics culture for data-driven decisions by providing a detailed roadmap.
You'll learn from others, you'll learn from your peers, you'll network, and you'll build community that will last well beyond the academy. We hope to see you there. For more information on the Academy, which is brought to you by the Finance Analytics Institute and the JPK Group, please go to the JPK Group website at jpkgroupsummits.com. You can find more information and you can register. For more information about uh, today's presentation, please contact me, Robert Swirling, at auroraPredictions.com. Thank you for your time today.